Hello, bonjour, Tansi. I'm Sunil from the Family Law Information Center. This video will provide information on the right of spouses to family property, both during a relationship and following a breakup of the relationship. The law that applies in Saskatchewan is called the Family Property Act. This webinar will look at who the Family Property Act applies to, the definitions of family property and family home and household contents in the Family Property Act, dividing family property by agreement, and asking the court to divide family property. We will finish by looking at a few examples of when the Act applies and how it applies to spouses. The Family Property Act applies to spouses. The term spouses is defined as married couples or couples who have lived together for at least two years without any breaks. This includes both heterosexual and same-sex couples. Couples who aren't married and haven't lived together at least two years may still have remedies with respect to property. It is a good idea to get legal advice from a lawyer about what remedies there may be. Family property includes all types of property. This includes land and houses, which is often called real property. It also includes household furniture, vehicles, bank accounts, pensions, RESPs, etc. The Act defines family property as property that either spouse owns or has an interest in at the time one or both of the spouses make an application under the Family Property Act. In some circumstances, the court will take into account property that either or both spouses owned at the time they separated, which is no longer owned or in existence at the time a court application is made. Family property also includes property that one or both spouses own or have an interest in, even if another person also owns or has an interest in it. It also includes increases in value of property owned during the relationship. The Act contemplates family property, not family debt, which we will talk about more later in this video. The family home is a property that the spouses lived in during their relationship. There may be more than one home owned. Some people will have a second home, such as a cottage. Usually the property where the people spend most of their time will be considered as the family home. Household goods includes anything in the family home or on that property, such as furniture, patio furniture, the main family vehicle, appliances, etc. It doesn't include heirlooms, antiques, works of art, clothing, jewelry, articles of personal use, or things used in connection with either spouse's work. For example, if a spouse regularly brings home a laptop to do work at home, the laptop is not considered a household good. Married spouses and common law spouses who have lived together at least two years have equal rights to occupy the family home and access household goods. This is true even if only one spouse's name is on the title. Although the Act doesn't apply to couples who have lived together less than two years, if they both hold title to the home, they have equal rights to occupy the home. In situations where a couple has not lived together at least two years and only one person's name is on the title, the title holder can ask the non-title holder to leave. Spouses who separate may need to determine how to divide the property and can decide on their own how to divide family property fairly. Parties should first learn about their rights and responsibilities under the Family Property Act. A good source of information about family law and family property is the Public Legal Education Association's Family Law website which can be found at www.familylaw.plea.org. Spouses can enter into an interspousal agreement to divide family property before, during, or after the relationship. Depending on when the agreement is prepared, an interspousal agreement can also be called a prenuptial agreement, a cohabitation agreement, or a separation agreement. The agreement can set out who will continue to live in the family home as well as dividing the family property. The agreement is binding if it is in writing, 
signed by both spouses in front of witnesses, and each spouse has had independent legal advice prior to signing it. An agreement that doesn't meet these requirements can still be considered by a court, but the court doesn't have to follow the terms of the agreement. Spouses who agree on how to divide their property can contact the Family Law Information Centre at 1-888-218-2822, extension 2, for a self-help kit to create a written agreement. They can also use the agreement maker on the PLEA website at familylaw.plea.org. Remember, both spouses need independent legal advice in order for the agreement to be binding, so you should consult a lawyer. You may want to consult a lawyer who provides unbundled services. Unbundled legal services means you hire a lawyer to do specific tasks and only pay for those tasks, and you do any other work that needs to be done. A list of lawyers who offer these services is available on the Saskatchewan Legal Coaching and Unbundling website, www.sklcup.com. If spouses need help negotiating an agreement, they may want to hire a mediator or collaborative lawyers to assist in working towards an agreement. For further information, see the options for resolving disputes video in this series. Another option is the Family Matters Program, which offers assistance to resolve urgent and outstanding issues. If both spouses agree to participate, the program will arrange a free three-hour problem-solving session. You can call 1-844-863-3408 or email familymatters at gov.sk.ca for more information. If parties can't come to an agreement, they can apply to the court. Applications to the court must be made within two years of common law spouses separating or prior to a divorce for married spouses. The Family Property Act allows a spouse to apply to the court to decide who can continue to live in the family home following separation and who gets to use the household goods, including the main family vehicle. This is called an order for exclusive possession. The court can also decide if the other spouse should be prevented from coming anywhere near the family home. The court can decide what family property is included and how it should be divided. Prior to making these decisions, the court can also order that a spouse cannot sell or give any property away. In dividing family property, it helps to remember one of the purposes of the Act is to recognize that child care, Household management and financial provision are the joint and mutual responsibilities of spouses and that inherent in the spousal relationship there is joint contribution, whether financial or otherwise, by the spouses to the assumption of these responsibilities that entitles each spouse to an equal distribution of the family property, subject to the exceptions, exemptions and equitable considerations mentioned in this Act. This is an acknowledgement that spouses may each contribute to the relationship in different ways. The fact that one spouse may have made a greater financial contribution than the other over the course of the relationship does not mean that they're entitled to a greater share of the property. Therefore, the starting point of property division is the assumption that the property should be divided equally between the spouses. While equal division of property is the starting point, there are some exceptions, exempt property and equitable considerations. Property owned before the parties became spouses may be exempt, i.e. not shared between the spouses. For example, if one spouse had a rental property worth $500,000 before the spousal relationship began, and this property is still owned by that spouse, and it is still worth $500,000, it may be exempt. If it is now worth $600,000, the increase of $100,000 may be shared. However, there is no exemption for the family home and household goods, even if one party owned the home before the relationship began. The Act also allows for equitable considerations to be taken into account. For example, a spouse with an addiction who uses all or most of the party's assets to support that addiction can be taken into account. Another example is where the spouses were married for a very short time and one spouse owns a home prior to the marriage, so dividing the house equally on separation would be unfair. 
Many couples today have significant debt. The debt may be equal to or greater than the value of their assets. The court will factor the amount of debt into a property division. The goal is to have each spouse receive the same net amount of property. It is important to note that the court cannot affect creditors' rights. If both spouses' names are on a mortgage, the court can determine who gets to stay in the home and how much one spouse must pay to the other for his or her share of equity in the house. However, the court cannot order the bank to remove either spouse's name from the mortgage. For further information, you may want to watch the financial planning video in this series. In this first scenario, Aaron and Candace were in a common law relationship for 23 months. Prior to moving in together, they purchased a house in both their names. They are now separating, and as Aaron refused to leave, Candace eventually decided to leave. Now he refuses to pay her anything for her share of the equity or sell the home. What are her options? As both Aaron and Candace's names are on the title, they both own the home. Both have equal rights to live in the home. Candace can try to negotiate an amount for her equity, but if Aaron refuses to negotiate with Candace, she can apply to the court. However, as she and Aaron have not lived together for at least two years, the Family Property Act does not apply. She would apply to the court for partition of the property. This is a more difficult application to make, and Candace may wish to consult a lawyer about her options. As a follow-up question, would it make a difference if they had lived together for 24 months? The answer is yes. If they had lived together for more than 24 months, they are considered to be spouses under the Family Property Act, and the Act applies. Candace can apply to the court to divide all of their family property, including the house. In our second scenario, we have Fred and Wilma, who are married 15 years, but have now separated. Fred moved out. Both names are on the title of their home. Although they have now been separated about eight months, they have not worked out a separation agreement to divide the property, nor have they started a court application. Fred comes to the home from time to time without letting Wilma know and removes things from the home. What are her options? So long as they continue to be married, and there is no court order or agreement giving Wilma exclusive possession of the home, Fred can continue coming to the home. Wilma can either try to negotiate a written agreement with Fred about who will continue to reside in the home exclusively or whether they will sell the home, etc. If Wilma and Fred are not able to work out an agreement, Wilma can apply to the court for an order for exclusive possession of the home. If you have any questions about family property, contact the Family Law Information Centre at 1-888-218-2822, extension 2, or by email at svp at gov.sk.ca.